This little tiny mm -hmm. thing here is a mini cocoa pod and this is how it would grow to afterwards. You know, a lot of kids in Europe, when you ask them where does chocolate come from, they will say from the supermarket shelf. Because <laughs> they don't know that it's a fruit that it actually grows yeah. like, uh, you know, in the field. When you hear about cocoa powder, the first thing that has come to your mind is beef. What? What? Oh gosh, come now, man. Come now. Well, let's trust in the chef a little bit now. Was ist los? Alles okay bei dir? Was machst du da? Geht's dir gut? What are you, well, what are you saying? Sag mal, ist das mein Kakao? Das kann ja wohl nicht sein. Gib dir mal wieder her! Das hol ich die Hunde hier! Das kann ja wohl nicht sein! Also What? mach keinen Scheiß, ja? Ich hab dafür hart gearbeitet! Jesus Christ, you know how hard I work for this? I'm gonna get the dog. So was will ich hier nicht working hard. And you deep in my Coco? What? Wait, wait, wait. Chef Jason? Yes, sir! Yes, sir! That's you up, boy! What are you doing on the ground, boy? You at the head or what? Let me help you up there. You're looking in a pretty bad shape, oh, man. Oh, Come on. Bad, no. ah, I was... Oh, God. God. The coco hit you on your I, head I, or I what? I don't know what hit me in my head. I was just, you know, in the land. You know, I don't do nothing wrong. Uh-huh. <laughs> Listen! Being a coco thief ain't easy, you know, but you know, I have no reputation for that. We outside Chef Jason here and we're on the coco plantation fields. And I'm with my good friend Tobias from Uber Green, yes. He's going to talk to us about the harvesting of cocoa, the production, what they're using it for. He has some interesting things that they're doing with it and I want to show it to you guys. We're going to be cooking with it. Hey, you never know what's going to happen when we're outside. we cocoa in it up today. Chef Jason, let's do this. Tobias! Where, boy? Hey, what's hey! up? Who is on my estate? Hi, Jason. Good day, yeah, good morning, Jason. I'm Tobias. Tobias, nice to meet you. Don't worry about the blade. I'm from Germany. So, you reside in Trinidad, though? Yeah, boy. I'm right here in Trinidad. You looking for my canal or what? <laughs> <laughs> you see, at the end of the day, it's a sense of humor with these guys. I mean, Coco is all about fun, you know. Tobias is going to basically walk us through the harvesting, the production That's right. of it. So, let me go now. Let me do this. Yeah, man, let's take a look around. Are we all good? Here you go. All right, Jason, so look, I mean, look at these beautiful pods and look at this beautiful tree. Cocoa is really the fruit of the gods. That's how they call I like it. How, I like how you say that. Trinidad is very famous for the Trinitario cocoa variety. It's a hybrid between Forastero from the Amazon and Criollo varieties that were, you know, grown thousands of years ago in the Mayan empire in Central America. These hybrids naturally formed and that's why they are called Trinitarios, because they are from Trinidad. I certainly believe that we have some of the best cocoa in the world, but it's critical that the processes post-harvest are on point. This little tiny mm. thing here is a mini cocoa pod, and this is how it would grow to afterwards. Is it possible we could... I always hear about sucking cocoa. Mm -hmm. Don't do that too much, eh? No, no. <laughs> Cracking it open and literally tasting the cocoa seeds. Yeah, man. First, you crack the pot open, right? Wow! Ooh, wow. Look at that. Oh, what is this green? What is this white substance on it? Uh, this is what we call the pulp. The pulp has a lot of sugars in it, see? and so it has some fruity flavors as well. So this doesn't taste like chocolate at all. It has a sort of slightly tartish, citrusy kind of vibe going on. Shall I bite into the seed? I would recommend not to do so. <laughs> So after that, then you take it to the lab and you start to process it. That's right. Look Let's it. go to the lab and see the next step. That's right. <laughs> Watch that blade, German. Eh, take yeah. it easy. <laughs> you know, a lot of kids in Europe, when you ask them where does chocolate come from, they will say from the supermarket shelf. Because <laughs> they don't know that it's a fruit that it actually grows yeah. like, uh, you know, in the field. So we're in the lab now with Tobias, as he promised us. He's going to show us a little bit of the intricacies and the processes of a how he produces the chocolate. You see, we fit in the role. We're all in our spiffy, intelligent lab coats. We're like scientists. Professor, are we ready to do this? Let's do this. First, you roast them. Roast them. You remove the shell. 
and then the nib, what remains, goes into this machine. The seed without the shell. All right, so this is the grinder here. We take the cocoa beans and we grind them up into a nice liquid. For example, a 70% dark, it means we have to add 30% sugar. So the more sugar you put, it's the sweeter the chocolate and the less the cocoa chocolate content. Co cocoa content. That's right. Well, guys, you all know when it's Valentine's Day and all these special moments with the ladies, chocolate is obviously on the agenda. And Tobias? That's right. Can can't go, go wrong. wrong. Check original sweet man. <laughs> can't go wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> At the very last stage of grinding, we also add our CBD oil. CBD oil, you just said? Yes. Can Guys, I... ganja. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Stop. Really, really. Just stop for a second. Stop. 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 We're putting cannabidiol, this is CBD, which is the legal and the medicinal part of hemp. An extract that is lab tested and 100% THC free. You won't get high of this. All right, so you'll take a little bit and we just drop it right in here. So we let that grind for another 20 minutes or so. Beautiful. And we temper it. This is just something so beautiful and obviously just seductive about this, huh? Okay, so an essential part of chocolate making is tempering. And for that, we need to take the chocolate that we just poured out and move it around here on our marble slab for it to cool down in order for the cocoa butter crystals to get in the right alignment. Right, so we have the mold here. These are the molds. So this is done by hand. This is handcrafted, handmade chocolate. And of course, with organic ingredients. So you just rest it there. And it works out the bubbles. And it works out the bubbles. Ooh, look how clever this is. So this is your packaging. That's our packaging, eco packaging. A little chocolatey now. Yeah. All right, well, take this out. Oh, 70% dark chocolate, look at that. So that's how it looks in its form when we pour it in, and this is the finished product. That's right, yeah. So you want to try it? I would love to try it. Try a piece. Piece for you. <laughs> try a piece, you know, you <laughs> treat your cameraman nice. How do you say cheers right. in, in German? Zum Wohl. Zum Wohl. Zum Wohl, it's Zum like, wohl. enjoy it. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a boldness inside of it. Obviously, it's not Swedish. Rich, robust, bold. And dark chocolate is obviously much healthier for you. So talk to me about white chocolate. Do you guys do white chocolate also, right? Well, we do white chocolate as well, um, but white chocolate has only cocoa butter, sugar, and milk powder. That's it. It doesn't have the cocoa nibs, and that's why you have a white color, and the, the dark chocolate is made from the cocoa nibs. But if you just grind up the beans and you press it, there's two products you will get. The cocoa butter and the cocoa powder. You all, and you all make this too. Look how fine this is. You can make cocoa tea with this. Tobias, I, I, I want to take some of these things. I want to showcase it. No. It's time for me to shine. I want to get outside because we're outside. We we're outside. going into the fields and I'm going to use some of these things to do some uh, cooking. Let's what do you do think it. about it? You know what I mean? I mean, I have my knife here. We have a block. Let's just go and cook Let's before I get into trouble. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'm so excited about all the chocolates and it's my time to shine now. So I, I really want to use some of the products inside and I came up with some ideas on the fly. Always believe in using fresh fruit, especially local fruit here in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm. We have pineapple, we have bananas, local grapes, as well as pawpaw. No. So let me, let, let's talk about doing a nice fruit fondue. I have some milk simmering gently. You could tell it's simmering is that you're getting those light little bubbles coming around the exterior of the milk. Basically, your chocolate, as you mentioned, is organic, right? We are using organic production principles, right? So we don't use any chemicals. The San Antonio estate in Grand Cuba is actually certified organic. Just the only estate in Toronto that is certified. So we're doing our own stuff here. So pretty much at this point in time, we're using this prize chocolate that you're doing here. We're going to then melt gently the chocolate into the milk. So essentially, it's almost like a ganache fondue. Check this out, three. As I put it inside there, the chocolate starts to break down and it's starting to melt. So I'm going to go in again. I'm turning it in together like that and we're starting to melt it. So we put that inside here, the button. Now this is going to add flavor, obviously, inside here. Chocolate and orange goes exceptionally well. And the new cheap mm. brand, Orange Essence, is brilliant. I just, it's just a match made in heaven. So I'm just gonna add a few dashes inside there and you're gonna get some citrus profiles going on. Now this is a beautiful canvas. So for us mm. to add some additional flavor, I'm gonna add some spice inside here. Some amchar masala. Is that right? Have you ever had um, like nah, chocolate sauce with amchar masala inside before. of it? Nah, so man, this I'm... is a bit tart, a bit spicy inside there. 
So just gonna drizzle some of that inside. I'm gonna show you how to do this and I want you to try because you know you, you're gonna show off with your chocolate. I'm gonna drizzle it on just like that. Look at that. A lot of love. You use butterfly lilies in your chocolate also. Yeah. So we are gonna be adding it inside here just to give it a little bit of color and garnish and we just stir, stir them. He did mention that he used the cocoa nibs to grind to get to the chocolate liquor. Yes, that is correct. So the we, cocoa liquor. The cocoa liquor, sorry. So we're just going to drizzle some on it just like that. I'm, I'm going much. for popo. You're going for popo? Okay, yes. I'll go for pineapple. Check that out. Look at that. Look at that, people. It's quite nice, huh? Mm -hmm. It's okay. amazing how you're pairing you no know, flavors that are not really um something that we know right yeah you know yeah. you gotta experiment with mm -hmm. chocolate because with peppers scorpion peppers are being used inside of chocolate you're using cbd we should introduce other spices i've used um char masala today and his chocolate but what if i make a pudding for you a chocolate huh. pudding That's right on the spot right. Let me do this. let's do it on the fly let's do it all right so i'm warming up some milk right now just this one i'm going to make a little sweet because sweeter. puddings cool. you know but he's sweet too, you know. Yeah, no, I mean, I, listen, I yeah. told you the man is a sweet man earlier on, right? And I want a little sugar. Now he come for pudding, he gets in pudding, right? <laughs> <laughs> some white sugar inside there. You could use brown sugar too, right, Tobias, if you want. I'm going to add some flour in there. And uh, you told me you like pudding. Of course, it reminds me, you know, of my childhood. But you know, one thing's for sure, when I take back those chocolates to, to Germany, pudding I haven't done as yet. That's something that... Well, I'm, I'm giving you the skills. So you yeah, know what? So, okay. Start to cut up that chocolate for me. All right, okay. Because we need to incorporate. Now, we're using the same chocolate that we did earlier on. The CBD effects are one that will mellow you. It will be calming. Chillax. It's cool. Yeah. Chillax. That's what it is about. <laughs> and if, if you can't sleep well, mm -hmm. you know, you eat a... Uh, a little piece of this CBD chocolate. <laughs> I don't know. So listen, he sent me some samples of these last week, right? <laughs> and your boy Chef Jason eat two pieces of it. I ate it in the afternoon. I said, this is the first time I'm having this CBD chocolate, right? Your boy sleep like a baby whole night. I call him the next day. I said, to my husband, I good. I good. I good. <laughs> Since we added that chocolate inside there, you could see that the bubble, bubbles are starting to come up from the end. And I want to just flavor it. So I'm going to add some vanilla essence inside there. It pairs very well with chocolate, of as course, you know. It does, yeah. I love coffee with chocolate. We have the new coffee essence from Chief, so I'm just going to put in a few dashes. Now, this stuff is intense, so just a little touch. All right, here we go. And the butter will also create an emulsification where it thickens up the pudding additionally. And you pour it in just like that. Look how rich that is. Uber green chocolate pudding. That looks uber tasty. It looks uber tasty, yeah? So what I have here is just some digestive biscuits. I'm just going to add a little bit of crunch on top of it, just like that. Look at that. This is the beautiful white chocolate from Uber Green that he showed us earlier on. Enjoy. Wow, this is good, man. <laughs> a lovely vanilla and coffee chocolate mix. Beautiful, you got a nice mm. coffee inside mm -hmm. there. That coffee essence is brilliant inside there. As mentioned, this is mm. a CBD chocolate, so you know he's going to be in a good mood in a little while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, pretty much, I've done sweet items for yourself, far, right? When you hear about cocoa powder, the first thing that has come to your mind is beef. What? What? <laughs> oh, gosh, come now, man. Come now. Only trust in the chef a little bit now. Only just treat me like if I know what I'm doing cocoa rubbed beef steak listen i have my strip steak here people take this in this is a first here what we're going to do we're going to do a spice rub so the first things first is that i have some chief brand paprika chief brand cayenne powder chief brand black pepper and salt and some chief brand flakes so we're making a spice rub now the chief ingredient here <laughs> is mm. our cocoa powder from uber green right so we're going to be adding a nice heaping tablespoon of that inside here the boldness and the richness of the cocoa powder really does marry well. You get those earthy profiles from the cocoa powder mm -hmm. into the beef. I sprinkle it on just like that. And it's going to have a brilliant color. Look at that bark. Look at that beautiful coating of that beautiful cocoa powder inside there. It's sweet, but it does have some savory profiles inside. And then we just place it into our hot oil like that. Hot pan, right? You get that sizzle going on. Beautiful stuff. This has been about two minutes on that side. We're just going to do it for about a minute and a half on this side now. So to that, I'm just going to add a little bit of butter inside there. This is just to condition the steak. So important when making a steak, you want to have that great butter inside there. And you just want to beat it around just like that to allow all that great savoriness from the butter to be integrated well in the steak. 
So what's going to happen is that I'm going to take these out. I'm going to rest them right here to rest. And we're going to slice into our steak in about two minutes. I mean, beautiful stuff. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Are you getting the cocoa inside there a little bit? Mm-hmm. You can get that out. It's a slight little granular feel to it. It's robust in nature. And I didn't know cocoa was goes so well with beef. Yeah, this is nice. Don't just think chocolate is just for confectionaries and desserts. It's great inside savory preparations. Well go back. This is it. This mm -hmm. is good stuff here. Yeah. I know exactly that when you go home to Germany. We can share some of these recipes. Mm -hmm. There's the spices that really make it and bring it to life. We just basically walked you through the whole estate plantation field, showing you literally how we picked the cocoa pods, how it's dried, how it's grounded, how it's tempered, how it's molded. We made it into the bars. And for us to take something such as this and obviously melt it with our local spices here and from cheap brand products and showcase something that is obviously local, proud about it, sustainable in nature. Tobas, I'll right. say thanks so much for coming on the show. We learned a lot from you. Everybody outside there, obviously, this is educational entertainment at the same time. Thank you, Jason, man. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure for you. My brother. So, look out for us again. You never know where we're coming out. We all throw Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, you never know, we might end up in your backyard. Because at the end of the day, how you say we outside in German? We sind draußen, man. We sind draußen, man. <laughs> yeah, boy! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. You know, I'm going to get the dogs for you. What do you No, okay, no, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nobody you mind. You're about yeah. to add out! Yeah, okay. <laughs> Tobias, do you have any chocolate? Hey, this is not what it looks like, okay? We'll use I this. come to do a chocolate show. Tobias, this is not. Oh, oh. I mean, they'll okay. tell you. Yeah, 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 ye